I'm going to show you how to do a chi-square goodness of fit test by hand. So we're going to be using the formula to compute the chi-square measure. If you want to see how to do this either using the TI-84 calculator or using Excel and Google Sheets, go ahead and take a look at my description for those links down below, or you can click on the card here. Let's go ahead and dive in. So we want to see if students have a preference for classes. We've got some enrollment data here. And we're going to call this our observed data. So we've got 150 students who have enrolled in 9, 10, and 11 o'clock classes, and they've enrolled in this distribution here. If there was no preference, we would expect, so this is going to be my expected column here, we would expect those 150 to be evenly divided by 3. So 150 divided by three would give me 50 in each of these classes. So I've got now my observed and my expected values. I'm gonna put those into my chi-square measure, and that's gonna allow me to test my two hypotheses. If we find after we do this measure that it's close to zero, that tells us that there is no preference. We, of course, expect a difference in enrollments. They're not going to work out evenly perfect every time. But if it's close to zero, we're going to say that there's no preference. If it's significantly greater than zero, then we have shown that there is a significant preference. Notice that we don't do less than zero, and that's because of this squaring. We don't have a left tail because there are never any negative chi-square values. Okay, let's do the math. So this means that I'm going to add these together. So this is the sum of each of these fractions. So for each of my data values, I need to come up with one of these fractions. Let me go ahead and grab my black pen, and we'll go ahead and start working. So I'm going to do, um, first of all, data value number one. That's going to be 31 as the observed and 50 as the expected. So for this first fraction, I'm going to go observed, which is 31, minus expected, which is 50, squared, divided by expected, which is 50, plus. Now let's move on to data value number two. So for data value number two, we're going to have observed, which is 63 this time, minus expected, which is 50 squared, divided by expected, which is the same each time here. And then finally, my last observed value, 3, is going to have a fraction as well. So 56 minus 50 squared divided by 50. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my calculator and very carefully put this into my calculator. So I want 31 minus Okay, we hit enter. Hopefully I entered those in right and I get a chi-square. This is my test value of 11.32. So my chi-square test value is about 11.32. Now that's going to live on my chi-square axis somewhere. That's my horizontal axis, but I need to figure out what my critical value is using that 0 0.05 significance level. So for my critical value, I need degrees of freedom. My degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom, it's going to be the number of data values, which is two, or which is three, minus one, which is two. So I've got two degrees of freedom, and I've got my significance level of 0 0.05. I've got a chi-square table here. Let me go ahead and bring that up. So I've got my chi-square table. I'm going to look at the 0 0.05 column under two degrees of freedom. So that gives me 5.991 as the critical value. So my critical value is 5.991. Let me put that here. 5.991. That's going to cut off my rejection region. 11.32 lives within that rejection region. So we are going to conclude that we reject our hypothesis and we have found a significant preference. Thank you so much for watching. Any questions or comments that you've got for me, go ahead and put those down below and do take a look at my other videos.